Hi, I'm Brian Haberlin, and uh, next month we have the debut of the first Jules Verne's Lighthouse, uh, which was originally Lighthouse at the End of the Earth, and now will be Lighthouse at the End of the Galaxy. And we've moved it up to Earth 2717 and put it in my Anomaly universe. And if you haven't seen my Anomaly books, look out for my Anomaly books. They're quite fun. Longest original full-color graphic novel ever done with the first one and augmented reality. You can get them at experienceanomaly.com. But that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is a little behind the scenes uh, of a cover. So uh, I wanted to do a wraparound cover uh, and we kind of have a theme uh, in the book where we have the people on the left are the, the people who run the lighthouse and the people on the right are the people who, well, they're the pirates who come to take over the lighthouse. Um, so uh, on the front cover, uh, so it'd, it'd be something you could like look at kind of like um, like this. You know, this would be the front cover, and then the back cover would be just like this. So we have the lighthouse in the middle, sort of splitting the two images for us. Okay, let's get out of this crop. Come on, Photoshop. All right. Um, so what we have is a whole bunch of layers. Uh, uh, I did the line art and the final pass on this. Jared Van Dyke did the heavy lifting on most of the color. Um, if you uh, want to see what the, uh, I'll put it in normal mode. So the line art looks like this. You can see we actually added the conglomerate logos which are on their chests in color because they're not there on the, the main thing. We have Moses, Moritz, Vasquez, Philippe, and then all our nasty pirates, Dr. K, Carnante, uh, Amethyst, the leader, Congre, Siren, who's actually in this kind of interesting suit, uh, her essence is all liquid, so it's just liquid going through that suit. Um, and then we also have um, uh, the big guy. I'm just gonna call him the big guy. That's not what this is about. <laughs> Bedlam. There you go. Brian, it's your own thing. Gotta remember the names. Uh, I actually have a cheat sheet somewhere for all the different pirates' names. <laughs> so anyway, um, so you know, the first thing you do when you're coloring one of these things is uh, I'm going to put on the uh, flat channel. So you get we send it out to flats, uh, and that means essentially that every basic area is a flat color. And what that allows you to do as a colorist, it speeds you up because then you could just you know magic wand an area and then start painting on it. You don't want to do it on the layer, of course, that you have your, your channels on because you aren't on channels, but your flats. In ancient days, we had to do them in channels because um, uh, you want to keep that pristine in case you have to come back in and, and change some things and tweak some things. And you can see where I did do that um, on the final image because we were playing with Vasquez's look and in a couple scenes, Vasquez was looking because uh, Philippe also has sort of the half shaved head kind of thing and they were looking a little close so I went with uh, Vasquez as a uh, redhead but originally Vasquez was not a redhead so again that's where some flats come in handy to change okay. uh, so let's go ahead and pick out through through uh, some of these these these, uh, these, these layers uh, I'm going to take the, the line art off that I've had because basically I was just showing you the original line art. You can see how the line art in the background has been all knocked back and made into full color, um, which Jared did. Uh, but let's go ahead and start from the bottom and work our way up. Uh, I'm going to take the line art off here so you can see just the pure color of the background image. Uh, Jared is just, I mean, he's awesome. He's, he's, you know, I've worked and trained some of the best colorists in the industry, uh, and uh, he is right up with every single one of them and probably a little better than 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 
all of them. <laughs> he's, a, he's a really talented painter, and those are really the people that you want to bring in as colorists. So you can see how he's like carved out the different sh forms and shapes uh, in here. I mean, because if you go back up to my line art in normal mode, none of that shading's in there. You know, all that shading is what Jared put together. I mean, he sculpted out the thing. He, I gave him some basic indications of where the light would be coming from, which is how I always used to like working. I would just pick, you know, almost like a cinematographer. Once you know your light's coming from the upper uh, right-hand corner or something, you know where that nose will cast its shadow if you know the structure of the face and the structure of the body. So it becomes very easy that way. But you'll notice there, that he really did, you know, I almost want to call it volumized the whole thing. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. So anyway, we'll go back to here. So I'm going to go ahead and put back on the line art. The other interesting thing that Jared does um, with a lot of my, my line art is we'll knock back some of the color. So if you look back up here, you'll see the interior lines on the face uh, have been knocked it back to a brown. Uh, they're not pure black anymore. It's really more evident too over here on Congre, where you can see that the ink lines are been made into brown lines, which I think works fine and is an interesting look. Um, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go back in and, and, and put back black lines if I really don't like it, but I think it works works well and adds another dimension to the piece. Um, okay, so let's look at, so that was our basic, basic color. So that was with, you know, brushes, he's got certain textures that he's, uh, that he has scanned in from either his real paintings or whatever. Um, uh, let's see, so he moved all this stuff around, he's got nice paint strokes here and stuff like that. Uh, but it often will lay over, because you can see in here in this the, this area, uh, you can see where a texture, which is actually a painted, this is actually probably from one of his canvases, he has a lot of his canvases that he's scanned, and that's put on top of the color with, in a uh, in an overlay fashion. And it gives you that nice texture. So anyway, let's go back to line art. Uh, so let's just split apart some of the things that are in this in this. Uh, file. So here we've got another multiply layer. And so we're messing with, I was, I was trying to nail down uh, Vasquez's flesh tones. So you can see where I've kind of played with some different things. So I have a little bit of an overlay layer. If you look at this layer in normal mode, it would be like a, a, a brown, basically. And by putting an overlay mode, you can see how it just helps tint her, uh, her complexion because she needed to be a little, little darker. Um, we have line art. Over here we got a color dodge going on. Let's see where if we can find where, where Jared put the color dodge. Oh, see it's up here in the eyes. So color dodge was used up here to brighten up her eyes. And that would be just a blue that's there with a the color dodge. And again, if we <coughs> put it in a normal mode, you can see where it was uh, just a flat light blue color. And also, see how it also is affecting uh, that eye over on uh, on uh, Bedlam as well. So we'll put that back to color dodge. Then we have another hard light, so we know this is going to be probably an effect somewhere. Hard light, overlay, color dodge, those are the things that are often used for uh, for this kind of thing. Again, kind of hunting around. See where he put put it. You know what? I, I don't see it there, and, and it probably just doesn't have anything in it. Because I don't see where it's working. Okay. Now we have a screen layer. So granted, screens are often used for effects and glows sort of things. So I know this is going to be glow. And I can also see that it's the shape of the lighthouse. So I'm betting it's some of these effects that we have going around the lighthouse. So if I take it off, you'll see it was a nice little stroke that was put around the outside of the lighthouse. So that's with it, that's without it, with it, without it, with it. And then we have another effect. So this is, again, sort of our a really pretty sort of radial effect. 
which makes the lighthouse, since we knock back the color so it's not just against black anymore, it separates the lighthouse. Here's another effect that I KO'd, which I thought, I guess I thought it was just too much. So I didn't use that. Then we have the lighthouse line art. So the lighthouse line art is on a separate layer. Or color is on a separate layer, I should say. And here's the line. Now this is some more effects. So these are the lights in the lighthouse. And this is done with a screen layer. So it's done with a light color, usually with a good amount of sat saturation, um, and that's without it, and that's with it. Now it has all these nice lighted windows, because I always like to think that it kind of lights up like a Christmas tree when it's doing its thing. So the lighthouse is a giant computer that they're in this area of space that they're in, there's a sargasso of wormholes, and you need a computer the size of a giant skyscraper to calculate safely transit through these wormholes. And the wormholes are so valuable because they can cut months off uh, spaceship uh, travel, uh, time travel. And of course, um, these evil guys over here know that as well, and they take it over. Yeah. Because he who controls the lighthouse controls the universe, or at least that galaxy. So you don't know what's in this other universe. So these 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 uh, channels are all, our layers are all showing uh, additional lights put on the lighthouse. Lights in the lighthouse. Ha, ha, ha. This is going to be up on top. Th these little icons can show you kind of like the tiny, tiny thumbnail. So this is going to be something, probably those lights on the very top. Yeah, so this is amping up some more of those lights on the top. See the really kind of flary effects up here? And you can see that uh, there's some black here, but in a screen layer, black becomes transparent. So if I looked at this in normal mode, you'll see that's what the effect looks like. It's and when you go to screen mode, it's like that. This is another screen layer, so a little bit more kind of glow. You know, I, it's it's often best to do with these effects with like multiple colors with them rather than just you know when I'm teaching them and the basic level it's like it's just a big flat uh, sort of uh, one color but really you want to have more than one color on these things. We have a big color dodge again going on these so we have these cool nice uh, vertical stripes going along which I think work as a really nice design element. And then we have a color dodge, which is just kind of a rainbowy effect that he's got going on here. Again, if we look at the in normal mode, and you'll see too, um, you know, when when I when I teach people um, this stuff, uh, it's it's really not using. See, it's only nine percent that he's got on here, uh, so he's just using it to for a little bit of a tint. Okay, if I go ahead and make that one hundred. You can see how strong that that gets, right? So it's that effect, but taken all the way down to nine. So it just has a little bit of that, but it gives it a nice little flavor too. Some more effects around, some more flares around the lighthouse itself. Again, those are you can see it's on black, so you know it's going to be a screen layer if I look up. Another, we have a normal layer going on here, but I don't see it really. Oh, it's doing a little bit, I think, by one of the eyes. Some more color tinting. I'm sure this was me. Uh, I usually will do some sort of overlaying to sort of unify color on pieces. Like, see, it, it's just kind of drab without it. If I go in with a nice warm, I went warm on this side, cooler over on this side. Um, and you can see how it really kind of helps pull together the piece a bit more, especially on Congre. He gets rid of that sort of desaturated look. And then adding some more glows around the bad guy's eyes. So again, that's a, it's overlay. Because what overlay will do is it kind of makes it more like there's light. It affects, it uh, makes a glow uh, 
affect the surrounding area well. Like, like whatever light is coming from those eyes is actually reflecting on the uh, surface. And then, what do we got here on this last one? And these are the conglomerate logos. So it's basically Earth with a moon, uh, and it stands for C, the conglomerate. There you go. Brilliant design. <laughs> Um, and you can see these are in uh, normal mode, but they've been knocked down to 66%. So uh, you can still have the uh, shape and, and, and some color from the uh, uniform come through. Otherwise, they would just look really flat. And then my final, final thing, I just did a little bit of dodging and burning. I, uh, and I took away, it looks like I took away the effects on, uh, on Siren's eyes as well. So this is my final, final up here on the very top. And you'll see that I kind of dodged and burned a little bit. It's a good way to kind of, it kind of gives you a little bit of these kind of pin spotlight stuff. I used to love those old Star Treks with Captain Kirk where they did these really pretty uh, spotlights. But that's just a dodge on top of these things just to bring out a little bit more light and bounce. And that's it. Uh, the final order cutoff for stores is, is next week on the 22nd, uh, so you still have time to run in and say, hey, I want to get Jules Verne's Lighthouse by myself, David Hine, and Jared Van Dyke. Thanks, guys, for watching.